morning everyone welcome to Lee and Toon's channel and it's breakfast time but not for me I can't eat yet the animals come first over up all right spoon chew yourself girl two hungry kids here and um, we're gonna do the chickens and we'll give a look at you give you a look at the fish as well oh don't jump up don't jump up club spoon eight I'm seriously thinking about training these two down 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 This is going to be fun trying to do it one-handed. Uh, go with it. Come on, Spoon. Let's get yours. Spoon always tries to get a cheeky mouthful of his food. Hang on, girl. I know my table manners aren't great, but yeah. Right then, that's the nutters done. And look at my garden. I think it's stretching a bit calling it a garden. That giant bamboo is something else. We cut two pieces yesterday, two new bits of growth. I had one for dinner, gave one to Toon's mum, but there's loads more coming. Toon doesn't really like coming uh, out the back too much while it's so overgrown because of these butterflies. She's not scared of butterflies, but the things that creep around she is very scared of. Not scared of scorpions or anything like that, but you put a slug, snail or a caterpillar in front of her. You finished already, girl? Are you? What am I going to do next? I think we'll do the fish. We'll leave the bucket up there. One lady's laying an egg for us already, so that's good. Spoon, you're not a chicken. If you lay some eggs, girl, you can have some. Right. Careful where I'm walking. Let's see. The fish situation this morning. They're normally ready, waiting to be fed. There's a few in there already waiting. There's a good chance that you won't see any big stuff in the uh, deep pond, but because they're a bit shy. Let's have a look, see if they'll play. Once they start, that'll be it. Once one starts eating. Come on everyone, camera shy I think. Now you see, we might see there's a, there's a couple of koi carp in there as well. We're not eating those, I'll draw the line at that. But uh, there's a few in there that look like koi carp, but they're actually something called a, a banai which uh, they grow big, they, I suppose they're very, very similar to a, a UK style carp. Beautiful fish. Let's try and get the camera a little bit closer. Now they're feeding. Yeah, they normally come up a lot more than this but I don't normally stand this close, so we'll throw it a bit further and see what happens. Now that everything has spawned now, there's a lot of little babies in here. Uh, we'll probably leave it another week or two, and then we're going to start taking some fish out of here. Normally we'd use the yok yaw, which is a drop net to take them out, but as they get bigger, they get faster, and they're not stupid. Once you lift the net up, and they rock it out the side, so it's hard to get them out. And then once you've done it a couple of times, they totally wise up, 
and they just hug the bottom over the far side, so it's going to have to be the fishing rods, which I don't mind at all. Clop, what are you doing, buddy? I know, you can see the food, can't you? Huh? You can see the food. The spoon was first, though. Huh? The spoon was first. Did you get it, girl? Clop. Yeah, man. Where it's all possible, I've always kept fish during my life. Even when I was a kid, my mum and dad let me keep piranhas in my bedroom, four piranhas. Started off very, very small. Used to give them live shrimp. Uh, they grew very, very big. And in the end, I just had one giant one. So if you missed the feed for a day, there'd be a chunk taken out of one. And then once they tasted flesh, that was it. Clock. What are you jealous for, mate? Huh? It's only one little fish, fish food pellet. Isn't it? But now I'm going to give Spoon one, so wind your neck in, boy. Go on, girl. You know he's going to be moody with you. Right, let's see if we can get some monsters to come up. But, uh, normally I have to get out here really early in the morning for these guys. Or just as it's about to get dark and then the big catfish come up. But we'll give it a go, but we'll probably just get some small babies coming up. Because again, they've spawned in here as well. There's babies everywhere. I don't think it's going to happen. The big paku were up here last night. to leave these here and just come back to them. The hyacinths are uh, surviving better than I anticipated because we were moving them from the tiny little top pond over there. So the hyacinth grows really well underneath the undergrowth up there and it's only knee deep so the roots of the hyacinths love that. Um, but every now and again we have to strip them out and I throw them into these two ponds but you'll see that they're quite yellow in comparison so they don't last quite so well but at the moment these have been in here about ooh, about a month, month and a half and they're not dying back I've thrown duckweed in here as well just the small sprats even at the moment and the shrimp, I can see all the shrimp coming up for the uh, the pellet. I'm happy Klopp's not following me because he nearly pushed me in last night. So, although this pond's quite small, there are quite a few big fish in here, but I'm not going to be able to get that close with the camera because they're shy. So we've got some babook in here, a giant giant catfish but they just come up take two or three pieces and then they shoot off again so I can see a couple under the surface but they're not they're not gonna play ball ah, the greedy tilapia have found them oh something started splashing in here now so maybe not too long they'll come up Let's try and get you a better picture of the fish over here. I really need to clean the side of the pond. This algae, when it's wet, is so slippery. <laughs> I really don't want to fall in on camera. Mind you, it'll probably increase the views, which won't hurt. All right. So, now we're crouched down behind the wall. We might be able to get them a little bit closer. So the way we started this pond off, stocking-wise, we just took 
four of our big bath tub tin, which is the orange tilapia. We made sure we had um, two fem uh, three females and one male. We put those in here and a few bag of PN, which is like, um, oh, it's hard to describe really. If you're into UK fishing, I suppose a, a little bit like a roach or a huge dace would be more, more like it, but they, they, they can grow up to about five pound these days. And we put some bag of haw in here, which are the giant Siamese carp. They've got a huge mouth. They just look like, um, like a skinny carp. But um, yeah, they're absolutely monstrous mouths on them. They could, they're like a, what could I say, about a hundred gram fish. Could, could almost get a golf ball sized piece of uh, food in its mouth. They're, they're, yeah, they just defy, uh, defy nature. And we bought those from Bangkok. The um, tab tin we just got off the market, one bar each. And since then, they've just, they've just bred. And we put a few wild benin in, which are the silver tilapia. So we've got some hybrids, which are great, because they, they uh, the, the, the benin grow a little bit slower than the tab tim. Um, but you can sell them for a lot more. So here, your benin, they're about 70, 70 baht a kg. So your silver ones are 70 baht a kg, your pink ones, uh, anything up to about 120 and yet if you're buying the the babies off the market they're both one bar each the Benin grow a little bit quicker uh, the, good, the good thing about the tab tin you can have slightly higher stocking levels because they can take less less oxygen so if you've got low oxygen oxygen levels wherever you are uh, tab tin is the way to go but um, yeah, I, I strongly recommend get the pink ones. I mean, if they're the same price to, to buy and the growth rates are very, very similar and they're a little bit more hardy, why would you not, why would you not grow them? But we grow everything, absolutely everything. Oh. A little bit shy now, stood up. So you might see some of them, they're like half black, half pink. Some of them are still 100% tab tim, the pink ones. Some of them are actual hybrids. But when we fish them out, we'll give you a, we'll give you a close up. We didn't have so much green algae. I'd, uh, I'd put this camera under the water. Not coming close enough, though. What I might do, though, another day, is put the GoPro in here because that's a lot less murky in there. So if I could stick it in there on a little tripod that I've got and then leave it for an hour and come back and put some food in, I'm sure we might get some entertaining footage of the fish that are in there. Flop, what are you doing, mate? You know, it's not a good idea. It'll end in tears. Won't it, mate? Now you got to do a U-turn. Go on. Oh, we'll show you the good with the bad. I wasn't here when this pond was constructed and it's, well, what can you say? I know it's a, it's a big pond, but um, I'm not a builder, but I, I, I know how to, to make a pond. <coughs> YouTube's great for that. Uh, we had to drain it once as well. Me and Toon had to do a fix and all this side we had a crack underneath where the the wall met the the floor and the floor dropped so for those amongst you that 
know a little bit about pond designs. That should not happen. You should make it like a giant cage, so you're reinforcing metal in the floor, actually goes up your wall, so it's just one huge, huge construction piece, rather than separate walls sitting on top of a, of a floor. But we fixed it, we drained it, and uh, we did the repair, and now we get zero leakage. Ah, a lot of the pellets have gone. Let's have a look. The babook in here, I suppose they're about 10 pound in weight now. A couple maybe slightly heavier. The sawai a little bit heavier than that, two or three pound heavier. And the paku, oh, they range from about three pound up to touching about 10. We've got one, one massive one. That's about £10 as well, but they'll grow up to about £20. They're not great eating really, but um, these are for the lake, don't forget. These are for the fishing lake. Still waiting for that. There's one more crop of sugar cane to be taken out. That'll be early next year. And then hopefully by uh, the start of March, we can start digging. The problem we've got with that though is um, that'll be about the start of the rainy season. So we need Mother Nature just to hold back a little while because there's no way we can dig the, the lake when it's the rainy season. We'd be constantly having numerous pumps running all the time while it's being dug, so. If the rains come early, we'll have to put it back a year and we'll grow rice and things like that. Which we don't mind, it'll be a laugh. Learn as we go. Toon's grown rice with her father a few years, so she knows what to do. But we haven't got the machinery, so we'd have to we'd have to pay someone to come and prep all the land and harvest all the land. Well, the big stuff aren't playing ball. We're also going to get set up a little um, catfish tank. So that'll be, uh, what are they called? Baduk. So native Thai catfish. I like them, Toon. Toon, I wouldn't say she doesn't like them, but she can't eat them. Uh, she's, she seems to be allergic to any fish that hasn't got any scales. All right, boy. Want some more pellet? Here. Yeah. So they would be purely for for selling on to locals. Mm, I think they're about 60, 70 baht a, a kg, but they're so easy to grow. It's, if, you, if you've never kept fish before, it's, uh, it's, it's a good starter species. Any Muppet can, can grow them. Uh, as long as they don't overheat. Overheating is the main thing, so you've got to make sure that they've, they're not in full sunlight, depending on the size of your tank, of course, and what it's made out of. But we'll give that a go. Oh, and now there's two in there. Oh, well. Right, you've had your chance. Oh. Next day or two. This is gonna be full with weeds and cuttings in here because I've got to do the uh, the garden. I can't I can't be like that. It's one, it's disgusting, and two, there's lots of uh, things that could that could get you if you can't see where you're standing. Mind you, since I've uh, went away on my work trip, tune and. Uh, well, two one night she was woken up by spoon and it was a different type of bark, not just the uh, chasing crabs barking and she wouldn't stop for hours and hours so in the end soon came out and uh, 
yeah, she was barking at a snake, telling her where it was, so she lifted up a, it was a lid of a bucket. So it was a bit like Lassie from all accounts. Look, Mum, there's something here, come and, come and look. She got there and Klopp was acting all brave. As soon as he saw the, sky, uh, the, uh, the tail of the snake, he ran off. But not, not this girl. She had it, she was biting its tail. So you're all show and no go, mate, aren't you? All the gear and no ideas to say you. All the muscles. But scaredy boy. So I'm gonna trade you in, mate. Feed you to, uh, well, give you to those Cambodians, mate. They'll love you. I'm not sure if that's politically correct, but they do eat dogs, so it is factual. Uh, he's a lovely boy. He's a bit of a space cadet, but he's all right. Ain't you, mate? Hey, eh? ain't you? Well, you've both been fed. What do you want? Hey, eh? I think you like fish pellet more than your own food, don't you? Hey, eh? hey. Eh? Okay, so we're almost done here, and it's the time of the the video where I've started doing a shout out. So this is only the second one I've done. Yesterday was for Brad, so hopefully you've had time to check his channel out. It's well worth a look. And today I'm going to give a shout out to a lovely guy, or he seems a lovely guy anyway on his channel, to Gordon Tickle. That's the name of his channel as well. So the links down below. Uh, I recommend you give that a, a, a butcher's. It's very, very informative. Uh, he's got a good sense of humour. Um, but he's doing some, some brilliant stuff out in Thailand. I really, really do rate the angle that this fella's coming from. Uh, I think his latest project is fabricating his own olive press, because he's got a lot of olive trees. He's got a lot of trees of everything. Yeah, all the fruit and stuff. Um, yeah. I know he's, he's spent a lot more money on, on his homestead than, than we could possibly imagine, but uh, he's doing the right sort of thing, in my, in my opinion. And he's also got a remote retreat up in the mountains in Chiang Rai, where I think he's set up the business for his in-laws. So, yeah, well worth, well worth a look. Very talented guy. Yeah. And he mucks in as well. A lot of these vloggers talk about doing this, doing that, and they're with the wives and all that sort of thing, but I, I, I very rarely see them getting their hands dirty. Yeah. Well, for one, Toon wouldn't let me get away with that, that's for sure. And two, I just, it's all what it's about for me. You want to get in there, roll up your sleeves, get sweaty, get dirty, and, uh, and pull your weight, really. Isn't that right, Spoon? You pull your weight, don't you, girl? Hey? You? Not so much. Oh my word, it's a hard life mate, isn't it? Look at that. Up all night, dodging mosquitoes, daytime. Yeah. Oh, really? Let it go, mate. Right, on that note, he needs a bit of counselling, so I better go. All right, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.